Hi, I'm Lippy. And I'm Grumpy. Together we're Lippy and Grumpy Do Podcasting. In this episode, Caterpillar Kate Gate, Peepholes for Huskies, Zoom Failures and Line of Duty Spoilers. Now Lippy, we're six months in. Six months? That's flown by, hasn't it? It really has. It's been a good six months. Mm. We started this. You got a job? Yes, I got a job. I bought a house. <laughs> bought a house, that's very true. And I've planted some Brussels sprout seeds. So We've nailed it. <laughs> we have definitely nailed it. So we've had some feedback from our regular listeners, I'm pleased to say. So few people are listening, if not very many. <laughs> at least two. Uh, <laughs> at least two. Uh, oh, no, it was at least three, actually. I had oh. a also had a message from the Screaming Tomato. I had misspelled wife um, no. on the show notes, and I'm not sure how to change it, because that would have gone over to um, iTunes and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, moving moving away from that <laughs> slight mistake. Orange Marshall 2 was telling me about his optician trip, and he's had the same optician for 27 years. That's crazy. Which is crazy. And the, his last appointment in February had to see a new one. Oh, that would be well sad, actually. It would be. I mean, 27 years is astonishing. Either they were a very young optician when he first started them, seeing them, or they're very, very old now. Well, Orange Marshall 2's not that old. But still, 27 years of being a qualified optician. Yeah, true. I feel like you're at, you're at least... Well, I guess, yeah, if he was mid-twenties when he started. Well, That's only like the way he was, 50-something. Oh, what, the optician or yeah, Orange Marshall 2? The optician. Well, when you think I this year I would have clocked up 40 years being paid to mess around with computers. <laughs> Fair dues. Uh, he then goes on to talk about the 20-20-20 rule for using screens, mm. where it's for every 20 minutes, look away from the screen for 20 seconds at something 20 metres away. Which is good advice. I, he's got a couple of numbers run way round. It's every 20 seconds, look away for 20 minutes. Yeah. I was yeah say, just want to swap the units. So, first two units, other way around. I definitely yeah. do it the other way around, but I don't tend to look at something 20 metres away either. No, well, fortunately, I can just about look out the window at the trees and the houses mm. opposite. So, yeah, 20 metres is, is okay. But so it's, it's a very good piece of advice, actually. Yeah an optician told me that many many years ago yeah. so if you can do it that's very good and he's also had a bit of an incident on the bus as well where it was just completely overfull with people so uh, yes Not take it easy out there orange mm-hmm. marshall too now your foot is healing don't uh, don't do anything silly and we're back to emails from davros i'm pleased to say yes so clearly his late night Earth invading plans uh, uh, come to an end, so uh, he's able to send us the the email version, which is which is very much appreciated. Thank you very much. We enjoy the emails. We do enjoy it, although some of it was a little bit, I'm going to say, Bletchley Park, <laughs> uh, slightly hard to understand. <laughs> going to need to make a coding machine. <laughs> well, a decoding a machine. Decoding, this, machine. <laughs> a decoding machine. So he talks about retinal photography which you mentioned last week in your eye test. Yes. Uh, he says, instead, try the good old guts rectal exam. No, thank you. <laughs> no. Well, I was a bit shocked to hear this. So, Davros, I hope you're all okay, because that's not the sort of thing you have because you're bored in the afternoon. No. I, I think I'd like to avoid a rectal exam if I can. Yeah. He suggests putting it on your bucket list, but... We don't suggest online, that. To be honest. <laughs> and talking twaddle at the pub. It ba- it's back and it really has sharp the constraints of Zoom, the banter killer. He's absolutely right. Mm. Absolutely. There's nothing like being in the pub or with your mates uh, for a bit of fun. I hope outside the pub. <laughs> well, well, outside the pub, yes. In- yes, indeed. Yeah, so he spent Friday evening swapping double entendres, as uh, Davros does. Um, he's then got some code names for uh, mutual friends, and I can't decode that. <laughs> I, I might pass it on to that um, box number we had the private eye advert for yes. last week, uh, for which there was nothing in the in the letters section, oh. which was a shame because I was hoping for a bit of explanation. Mm. Davros offers some paint advice or colour advice. 
So it says, yellow swatches, be wary, yellow is a very seductive colour, but after a while its appeal wanes rapidly. I would agree with that. We had a yellow hallway for many, many we, years. We did, didn't you? We did. Uh, it's now Trade Magnolia. Mm. And I will have to agree with you there, Davros. It was okay for a bit and then you go, actually, I don't like this. You don't um, like the magnolia? No, I like the magnolia. Oh, I didn't the like the yellow. yellow. No, the magnolia is fantastic. I was going to say, but, you're, uh, a, you're yeah. a big fan of the magnolia. <laughs> yes. Uh, he then compares yellow paint to Chris Martin from Coldplay. And yeah. I, again, I have to agree with you. I don't. I don't. I, I don't see that re- connection. <laughs> well, the thing is that you start listening to Coldplay and think, oh, this is good. And then after about 10 minutes, you go, oh, this is quite dull. It's quite samey, isn't it? It is quite Every song samey. sounds pretty much the same. It does. I don't understand why they're as popular as they are. No. But I, I suppose would... these days, rather than listening to a whole album, you're picking and choosing tracks mm. um, it, very easily. You could have a couple of Coldplay numbers in a massive playlist. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Davros does then suggest that Magnolia is not a colour. You're, you're wrong. You're, just, you're plain wrong. It is a wonderful colour. But aren't magnolias like pink, the no. flower? No. What colour are they? They're magnolia colour. No, they're not. They're like yes, they pink are. at the end and they're like pink going into white. I don't believe so. Have you not seen they... the tree outside the Evans's house? It's a magnolia tree. Yeah, and it's not pink. Well, no, Yellow. the petals are pink into white. Oh, well, I'll have to go around and have a look at that. It'll be out soon, so we'll, we'll go and have a look. Mm-hmm. It's not beige, whatever magnolia paint looks like. Well, it's got to be based on something. <laughs> and it wouldn't be based on a tree that is a different colour. That would be bonkers. I wonder what it is based on then, because it's definitely not based on the tree. OK, moving back to Mr Davros. He says, magnolia is not a colour. It is the decorating equivalent of a zero room. And I believe zero room is a room on the TARDIS. Davros being a big Doctor Who fan. Uh. A clue, the lead actor turned 70 this week and his son-in-law has played the same role. That completely baffled me. (laughs) I have no idea what you're talking about. No, we got me there. No. yeah, That's quite interesting, though, that there's something where the lead actor's son-in-law played it as well. Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? But what I'll is, do a bit I of research. Know. I have got a feeling I know who the actor who turned 70 is, but I can't think of his name, so I'd have to go and look it up. Yeah. Uh. So maybe, maybe I'll do that and we'll come back at the end of the podcast. Mm. Now, you're itching to talk about a certain legal case, aren't you? Oh, do you know what? It's just had me in absolute stitches all week. I think it's been going on for like a couple of weeks, though, but this... Aldi and M&S lawsuit is just the best thing that's happened in this month, I think. <laughs> Honestly, Aldi's marketing team and social media team, they are one of the best and funniest tweeters I've, I've seen in a very long time. So in case our listeners haven't heard about this, give mm. us a bit of background to the, yes, so, the proceedings. Mm, so M&S, obviously, was the original Colin the Caterpillar birthday cake or cake it doesn't have to be a birthday cake but caterpillar cake is quite a common birthday cake and aldi have a caterpillar cake as a lot of other supermarkets do um called cuthbert and apparent and they're suing them for copyright reasons on aldi's cuthbert the caterpillar cake which Makes no sense because Tesco have one and Sainsbury's have one and Waitrose, like every other supermarket has one. But apparently the the difference is, is that M&S have a copyright over the chocolate face of the caterpillar and Aldi oh, have a chocolate face on their caterpillar. Whereas Tesco, Sainsbury's have a um, fondant face. Okay. So that's apparently the reason why they're suing Aldi over other people. But Waitrose have a chocolate face on their caterpillar. Yes, that's odd. I did read an article in The Guardian today about it, and it was Mm. suggesting the reason they're suing Aldi and nobody else is the fact they're German. (laughs) 
<laughs> which I was very surprised to read. Oh, I Guardian. saw that somewhere on Facebook, though, so I didn't think it was relevant. I didn't realise. No, no. Well, it's the sort of thing you'd expect in the Telegraph, but yeah. not the Guardian. Oh, that was very odd. So um, maybe yeah, it's truer I, than. Uh, I can't think? imagine it is. Oh, Why you wouldn't just do that out of spite? It, it must be to protect protect their own product, but. Mm. But yeah, but these these spats always do end up nowadays in some great twittering. They do, and in true Audi fashion, they have just gone all in on the, on the Twitter memes, and I've I've saved some of them. So the the one that really made me laugh was, this is not just any court case, this is free Cuthbert. <laughs> But that's obviously M&S's tagline, isn't it? This isn't just any <laughs> chocolate cake. This is an M&S chocolate cake. That is pouring petrol on the fire. That is that really good is. work there. That's another law case after this one's finished for using that. And then another one saying, just Colin, our lawyers. <laughs> Colin the Caterpillar. Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah. But they, they were going on for a good few hours, just coming out with different things. Uh, they tweeted... Judge Rinda saying, how's your diary looking? Asking for a friend. (laughs) (laughs) And I think, to be honest, if this actually ended up going to court, I would be very interested in knowing what happens. I can't imagine it will go that far. I would happily watch a four episode docuseries on it. (laughs) Well, what if it went to five? Oh, that's pushing it a bit. It's a bit bit too long then. It's a bit boring. Um, but obviously they've tried to pull in other supermarkets to defend them as well and they've tweeted Sainsbury's and Tesco's um, and a couple of others um, but missed out Morrison's and the, I didn't know them. the Morrison's social media team were funny as well tweeted back saying when you find out all of your friends have a group chat without you what about <laughs> our caterpillar cake? <laughs> Brilliant. So that was another really Very good, good one. But I think the the main thing that came out of it today, which I thought was amazing marketing, because there there is no way M&S can now carry on suing them with what they've kind of said. Well, they can, but it would look a bit dodgy. But Audi have come out today saying that they are bringing back a um, a special caterpillar cake that they had a few months ago or a few years ago, um, and in lieu of all of this all profits from selling that cake um will they'll be donating to Macmillan Cancer which is M&S's um linked charity and then their linked charity as well and said M&S let's put the money that we would have spent on a lawsuit towards helping charities and put it all behind us so I think what a good idea yeah great idea that's gonna be yeah that's gonna be hard to say no to exactly and actually M&S tweeted a picture of a of a cartoon dog sat with a caterpillar cake surrounded in flames going, it's, oh. everything's okay, <laughs> which also was quite funny. So I think they've realised that this isn't, isn't going the way that they thought it would. Do you think it might be a very cunning plan between the supermarkets to get sales of caterpillar cakes up? Oh, that thought did cross my mind because now... I've seen loads of pictures of people that have bought every single caterpillar cake to like taste them and see which one's best and like photograph them side by side to kind of compare them. So that's a lot of caterpillar cakes that are being sold. I know for the last two days, all I've thought is what I really I, would like is a piece of caterpillar cake. Yeah, me too. And did you know M&S do little jars now of smashed Colin the Caterpillar cake? So it's like a chocolate really? fondant with bits of cake in it, bits of smarty, um bits of like loose chocolate and like chocolatey mousse oh my god it looks so good sounds a bit cruel to be honest <laughs> i can't remember what they called it colin pot or something <laughs> that seems to be going down a road that we probably shouldn't be no. going down to be honest that's great well we'll keep an eye on that because mm. it'd be interesting to see how that pans out yeah definitely but i do think the charities are the way forwards they've also after they posted that posted tagging all of the other supermarkets saying get in on this with us too so yeah they've rallied yeah. a quite a good team to to donate to some very good charities so yes yeah excellent all around good outcome yeah. slightly related to social media mm. only very slightly 
I saw a post on Facebook last night from the Dawkin cat killer. Yes, so did I. Yes, oh, so you saw it as well. Yes, Yes, me too. Well, uh, she said, urgent, if anybody knows, we won't give out the name, please ask him to PM me as I have something that belongs to him. I thought it was a cat. (laughs) So I took a screenshot and on WhatsApp sent her a message saying, please tell me it's not number six. To which she replied, she replied, seven. So <laughs> the tally's gone up somehow. It's gone up. And um, I, I then sent a gif of a cat pretending to be shot by somebody's finger. <laughs> very funny. And I got the response, it's actually his wallet, but now I can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know when she gets in a giggle, she gets in a giggle. <laughs> Absolutely. And it was, it was late enough for... Um, couple of glasses of wine to have been had mm. so uh, yes yeah, so a bit of hilarity there with the with the Dawkin cat killer and hopefully he he um she got the wallet back to the gentleman oh i saw a comment yes all been sorted oh good <laughs> oh jolly good oh well, that's excellent now a couple of things in the papers from this week that i found quite interesting one was a a gentleman who has siberian huskies oh. he's actually got five of them um whether he runs a bobsleigh team. So you call it a bobsleigh? No, it's or not just a, bobs- a sleigh team. A sleigh team, I think. No, it's not bobsleigh. Bobsleigh's the one that the... Yeah, the well, you, you hurtled. There certainly is a sport. The shop in Pease Lake used to have a, a husky racing team um, that was, was very cool. They used to go up in the hills and do it. Anyway, so this, this gentleman has got a solid wooden gate at his premises, and the dog's are quite inquisitive. So every time there was a noise outside, they'd be putting their heads down, trying to have a look underneath. So what he did, he drilled four sets of three holes. So one big hole and yeah. then two holes above it. So they could put their nose through the big hole. And then their and then peer, yeah, <laughs> through the. And somebody's managed to get a photograph of all four holes occupied by the, so the huskies. <laughs> now, you may be asking why are there are only four when he's got five huskies. The reason is apparently the fifth one is very deaf and just doesn't pay attention and just clue. doesn't doesn't <laughs> not bothered in the slightest. So uh, she doesn't, doesn't need get a up to the gate. No, but it was a, such a cracking photo, and the eyes on the huskies are so mm, blue. Um, yeah, so it was slightly spooky in my view. Yeah, it looks like you're looking into their soul. It does a little bit, or they're looking into yours, or they're removing your soul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I may have overthought that a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit there. Yeah, just a little bit. And the other article was a man who bought a morph suit. Mm. So he bought it in in green. And what he was hoping is that he would be able to walk behind his fiance while she was on Zoom and that he wouldn't be seen. I've seen that. It was a total failure. Absolute. You can just see his head, can't you? And the silhouette yeah. of his body moving and it was all a bit blurry and... <laughs> just did not Absolutely. work it just didn't work at all and uh, obviously there was a gentleman who decided to stand in front of his camera with no clothes on whatsoever i last saw week. that as well uh, yes god and, uh, uh, the green suit would have been better in that case but, yeah um, i think was that an accident i feel like you wouldn't do that on purpose well there's several reasons why that might happen but the root of the problem is he left the camera on mm. Oh, I hadn't disconnected from whatever system he was using. <laughs> so whether he just popped back into the office on the way back from the shower, mm. uh, who knows? Who but, knows? Um, yes. Yes, very hysterical. So, uh, yes, please keep your clothes on and don't bother about a chroma green suit. Now, I've done a bit of research while you were talking about Audi cakes. Oh, yeah. And it was the doctor who I thought it was, Peter Davidson. I just couldn't get to the uh. name. Now, his daughter whose married name is Georgia Tennant. He's married to David Tennant, Ooh. who, of course, was also Doctor Who. So, and yes. Dave, Peter Davidson turned 70. Interesting. Uh, a couple of days ago, on the 13th of April. So thank you, Dan Frost, for that little... Uh, Fun fact. ...little bit of, yes, investigation required there. <laughs> uh, well, interestingly, I've seen there's a series, and I can't remember what it's on. It might be on the BBC, with David Tennant and Michael Sheen, the actors on there. And it's over lockdown and they're practicing this play. It's slightly set up, so it's not mm. true. But the dialogue between them is so funny. I really like David so, Tennant. So funny. It's worth watching because it is just so funny. And wife of Grumpy came in and she said, oh, that's just like you and, and your mate. 
oh, what do you mean? And then David Tennant has got a hoodie on and pulls the hoodie right over his head and pulls the cords right down so you can just see his eyes and his nose. She said, see? Exactly what, exactly what he would do. So, yeah. Yes, I can't remember what, for the life of me what that's called, but it's well worth watching if you can work out what it's work called. Work out from that lovely description what it is. Yeah, the premise is, is they're practising a play for this guy they don't really like. And then all of a sudden, Samuel L. Jackson appears. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hilarious. And he, yeah, it was a bit, a bit of a shocker. And it seems that he originally was lined up for the play, but then turned it down because he got a better offer. Mm. But then COVID hit, so he couldn't do that. So he tried to weasel his way back, back in. in. <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah. So he's being typically Samuel L. Jackson yeah. with lots of profanities. It's, it's very funny. Well worth a watch. And talking of watching things, Line of Duty this week, which was interesting. Uh, do, you, do you watch that? I haven't been. I need to get into it again. Yeah, I did see a message from somebody saying, please don't tell me anything about the series. I'm going to wait until it's all available on the iPlayer and then watch it in one go. I'm pretty sure it is all available on iPlayer. Not this series, no. Oh, but no, the they've been dripping ones. it every week. Yeah. yeah, the older ones are. Uh, which has been quite nice because you get that, which we've not had for a long while, where you have that whole nation getting around one program and mm. discussing it for a week. And it, it was quite a cliffhanger of an ending, Ooh. this one. Within minutes, I think, somebody had spotted that there's a scene in the trailer, which was shown, what, five weeks ago or yeah. so, that explains what happened in that cliffhanger. I, do well, you know what? I have been seeing so much stuff on Facebook of like a, yeah. of a scene and there's like circling of something. Yes. And then loads of people commenting being like, that meant that this and that and that. And I was like, oh, golly. There is quite a lot of that. But the, the, basically the end scene is there's, there's two people both pointing a gun at one another. Then it goes black and you hear two gunshots. So that's the end. Oh, God. But apparently there is a scene which has not been shown yet. Which they'll probably the, show next week as like a preview like what happened before well no no but it, it suggests I mean, the assumption is that one or other of them gets shot unless they're really lousy shots <laughs> but we know one of them's not and we know one of them's very good shots so at least sus- we're suspecting Assuming one of them somebody has, has been, died. Yeah, has been shot well not necessarily died but been shot injured anyway. so and of course you're going oh which one is it or is it both of them but this scene suggests that one of them definitely hasn't been shot so there was a massive discussion about that in, in papers and social media, which is quite, quite interesting. But there's also this ongoing thing about who is H. Yes, yeah, that I'm aware of. Now, Ted Hastings, who's the commander of AC-12, so he's been in the frame before, I think mostly because Hastings begins with H. <laughs> so, which is, yeah, logical. But he had, there has been some dodgy dealings with him. And there was a... a seen in a previous series where he's communicating with people in the organized crime group Mm. using some sort of messaging system Mm. so he's banging away at a keyboard and he's spelt definitely wrong and then on sunday night so one of the prime suspects is also communicating with somebody over some sort of messenger and no the word definitely popped up spelt incorrectly however i didn't realize it was spelt incorrectly because you're the following day (laughs) <laughs> when um, you saw someone had said it had yeah because <laughs> it looked completely okay to me i, I couldn't see anything wrong I, with it. honestly was... <laughs> i use autocorrect for definitely every single day because i start typing it and i'm just like i don't know the ending of how to spell definitely I, no anything that ends like that is a bit of a mystery as which far way as around does the l and the e and no the y way. go who uh, knows well, thing is with computers it doesn't matter yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, and I was pleased to see the return of the sucking diesel comment by Ted Hastings, which is bizarre because that is the one of the last things I'd like to suck. To be mm. honest, I just—I mean, I've had to siphon petrol out of a car, and that's bad enough. But diesel, oh no, thank you. So there'll be no sucking diesel here, thank you very much. <laughs> so, is there any news on my pajamas? Not on your pajamas, no. They'll be done in time for the next time I see you. So I've well, got, that's not, that's I've not got far, a week. is it? I've got a week. You've got a week because yeah. we've got a special episode next week. We do. Because it's my birthday. Gonna do what I want. I don't know the words to that song. 
<laughs> there is a song that goes some along those lines. Are we doing that next week or the week after? No, next week. So Tell then the it comes 27th. out on the Friday, and my birthday's oh, okay. on the Monday. Okay. Bank yes, holiday birthday. Yes. I literally, yeah. I was born at the perfect time because I do get the bank holiday, but we'll talk about that next week. But I had an exciting day. I was mentioned on the radio. Oh, yes. I was, which t- it took me by, it shouldn't have taken me by surprise because I text into the radio. So obviously it shouldn't have been a shock, but I text in sometimes anyway, because I obviously listen to the radio while I work. So sometimes like I'll hear something and I'll make a funny comment in my head and I'll be like, instead of just making it to myself like a loser, I'll text it in just in case someone else finds it funny. So this time they had been talking some, I can't remember, uh, oh, I think it was the lady from Florence and the Machine. Florence, whatever her name, her name is. Found a rogue hair growing out of her face that she, okay. when she like turned sideways, she spotted the hair, um, and then was kind of saying like, "Is this normal?" And they had put that on the radio, and then her song came on. So whilst the song was on, I was like, "Oh, I've got a rogue hair that grows out of my forehead." I don't know if I've spoken about that before on here, but no, I have rogue hair. It's like. When I say forehead, I feel like people think, well, isn't that just your hairline? But it's not. It's like the middle of my forehead in between my four, the top of where my hair starts and my eyebrow. And when you pull on it, like the wrong bit of my head moves. So I text in saying, I have a rogue hair that grows out the middle of my forehead and I've named her Hilda. <laughs> just because I have named her Hilda. She And I pulled her out a few days ago. Um... And then the song finishes and Greg James goes and uh, Laura's texting in to say that she has a rogue hair that grows out of her forehead and that she calls it Hilda and then moved on very swiftly from that. Yes, I can, I can see why. <laughs> and all my friends have been like, are you OK? <laughs> like, that's not normal to name a hair. <laughs> why Hilda? Because it's a hair. It's, it's Hilda the hair. Oh, I see. It's just rhyming. Oh, I thought there was something significant that I missed. No, it's just Hilda the hair, which I think I should have made it as a point in the text because it would have made it make more sense. Not necessarily, no. 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 The fact you named it. I should have texted in, really. <laughs> the fact it begins with the same letter doesn't make it any less yeah. slightly eccentric. Well, thankfully, I didn't put my surname, so no one really knows it was me, apart from everyone listening well. now. <laughs> you. <laughs> and a few friends i i um recorded the the bit where he said it i went back and recorded it and sent it to a few people because i just thought it was the one of the silliest things i've done in a while that yes that is but that is fairly i'm gonna be famous soon because of my hilda <laughs> very true are there any other hairs that you've named no because that's the only one that's in a weird place it is a bit weird it, isn't it she grows long like she would grow the length of my head hair if I left her. Could you leave it as a fashion statement? No, I don't, because it would droop in front of my eye. Yeah, oh, it would be a bit like Human League in the 80s, where Phil Oakley had a massive head of hair, and he had, the, his fringe basically went over one eye. Oh. And that was very trendy for a very short period of time <laughs> to have your hair like that. Obviously, I didn't have my hair like that, because no. I've never been trendy. No. Well, maybe I'll grow her out so you can see her next time. Or maybe not. And I'll give it a little pull and it'll pull. Well, my... you, you could just stick one on and see what it's like. Well, no, because it's a prop, be a like odd. it has a full on follicle and everything. Well, well it would need to, yes. It like, moves my whole forehead when I pull it. Hmm. <laughs> yes. I, I'm feeling a little creeped out. We need to change the subject. <laughs> yes. I'm going to talk about my allotment. You should talk about your allotment. Yes. So, a bit of a mistake at the weekend. So I went down there with um, various tools and that to put up some new poles for peas mm. after last year's disaster. Forgot to t- take the peas with me. Oh, no. <laughs> but I'm still worried about the frost. Yeah, it's not warm yet, is it? Although it's sunny, it's still quite cold. Yeah, it's Monday was frosty. Um, I'm not sure about this morning. So it's still close to freezing overnight. Yeah, I and played I... netball last night and it was chilly. Mm. Chilly. Yes, indeed. Still wore shorts because I'm you strange like that. Well, if you're running around, it's fine. I don't run. I play goalkeeper, so I stand still most oh, of the time. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, yeah. You probably need long trousers. Yeah. <laughs> Next 
step. So have you got a top tip for us? I do. It's an exercise-related top tip, though, so I don't know how popular it's going to be. Uh, Well, it seems to be a lot of people exercising at the moment. Definitely. Making use of the gyms and It's one of the things you can do, so, yeah. So my top tip, which has come about because I am in this situation today, (laughs) following my netball game yesterday. Um, So... If you're going to do strenuous exercise, make sure you stretch before and after. (laughs) Otherwise, you're going to hurt a lot. (laughs) Yes, Charlotte had a gym session with a trainer yesterday. Mm. As she got home, she went, oh, I'm aching a bit. And then today she said, I can hardly move. I said, well, when's your next one then? Thursday. Mm. Two in a week. I think she's going to struggle at the weekend. And she is considerably fitter than me. Than, or me. <laughs> Most well, people, to be honest, with the amount Most of people. poo she shuffles. Yes, indeed. And she's been doing that for, well, quite intensely for the last couple of months. Mm. So it does come as a surprise. But whatever you do, there's always muscles that you don't use. Exactly. Which is why things like the Iron Man, such a, or Iron Person, as we should say, is such a compelling sport because you're using. Just everything. about everything. Yeah. So my main muscle ache is uh, in my calves, which isn't a weird place to ache, but I haven't done exercise in a very long time. And yeah. I didn't stretch after. I did stretch before, though, but I didn't stretch after. Yeah, I've never been a big stretcher, actually, afterwards. I think I'm just too exhausted at the end of it. Mm. A stretch is good. Some people say not, so I don't know who to believe. Oh, I'm going to have a stretch tonight. Well, I, do, I obviously do yoga once a mm. week, so that's a bit of stretching. That's a good, yeah, that is good, isn't it? Get you all... It is really good. I think I've got taller through it. That actually, that's a thing, because where you're stretching all your bones mm. and muscles and kind of your posture's getting better and you do then end up getting taller, that is a thing. That's not just you thinking you're taller, you probably are. Well, I am. Well, I know... My hands are reaching taller because there is a movement we do where you bring your hands above your head. Oh, and I'm now muscles. banging into the ceiling. Ooh. And I, I'm claiming I'm taller. Wife of Grumpy says, no, it's just your shoulders are less stiff, which I can understand. A bit of both, but, maybe. Well, but my arms haven't got longer. No, but are you able to get them higher and straighter? Uh, yeah, that's never really been a problem, actually. Then, yes, you probably have grown. Yeah, to be honest, wife of Grumpy thinks I've grown every time I see her, but I think she shrinks and she just uh, she's not admitting that yet that she's shrinking. Yeah, like I'm not on an age where you grow normally. Like that's not normal to grow at the age of twenty five. No. So no, no, you're done. You're growing. So we know more. (laughs) Yeah, I think you're probably right. Anyway, what's our fun fact? Fun fact? Well, it's more of a weird fact. Oh, I like a weird fact. Weird fact. A quarter of all your bones, Mm. and this is by number of bones, not by length or any other sort of measurement, are located in your feet. Mm. So there are 26 bones in each foot. And that's obviously 52 in total. Out of a 206 total bones in your whole body which is just over 25%. Interesting. So your feet support your weight and allow you to jump, run and climb. Those bones and joints also allow your feet to absorb and release energy efficiently. It's one of the reasons humans can outrun any other animal in an endurance race. Endurance, right, okay. Yes, not, not for speed. I was no, thinking, no, like, no, no, no. are you saying if I'm running away from a lion, it's not going to get me? <laughs> Well, this is the thing. Uh, when I was reading this, I was thinking, yes, but actually, if you're if you're attacked by the lion in the first ten yards, which is highly likely, mm. or you know, other jaguar, for example, then actually the fact that you could outrun them over an hour is immaterial. <laughs> nothing. So absolutely nothing. So I think that's a I bit of a mute use... point. That one. <laughs> well, it depends on the animal. Mm. So you're saying you could run for outrun a dog if you are running with a dog. I guess I guess it's my fitness isn't good enough to outrun a dog, but that's my fitness, not my. Yeah, I don't think it's every human. Oh, <laughs> not the average human. Well, no, but it's also different. I mean, if you take somebody like Mo Farah, who is exceptionally good at running very long distances, mm. then he probably could, I would think. Outrun I wonder a dog. if Usain Bolt could outrun a lion. 
Oh, that's a good question. In terms of speed? Yeah. Don't know. There's something to look up for next week. There is. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can help spread Lippy and Grumpy's view on life by leaving a review on your favourite podcast platform. If you're not sure how to leave a review, or if you download from Spotify, there's some help at lippyandgrumpy.uk slash review. And if you would like to get in touch, email podcast at lippyandgrumpy.uk. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Goodbye. Goodbye.